All right, I spoke to both fighters in the dressing room. I'm cautioning you again. Obey my commands at all times. Shake hands, good luck. James Tony put on an awful lot of weight since the weigh-in two days ago. And I'm really curious to see how that will affect him, if at all, here, Joe. Well, I think with the, uh, the fact that he's, he's back to where he feels comfortable, when he walks around at it, it's got to help him. Uh, it probably feels a lot better than being 168 right now. He's a starving man for victory, and there's the bell for round number one. This one's scheduled for 12. The uncivil war is on now. Jones lunging with the left hand, and you know Jones hasn't been past the eighth round very often. Tony has. He's been there a number of times. We'll see if they fill each other out here, or if they go right at it. Tony looking real, trying to look real slick for Roy Jones, and Roy Jones is. Want some tentative punches, a few of them are missing here. But Tony looks <laughs> like he knows what he wants to do. He wants to make him miss punches, feel his power a little bit before he starts opening up. He wants to let Roy Jones Jr. feel that he's in control. He's the one making him miss. He'll walk him down. James Tony is a devastating body puncher. And we'll see when he starts his assault downstairs as Roy Jones starting to pitch some shots here to get the early lead. Tony trying to be real indignant as to break down the confidence of uh, Roy Jones right now. And Roy Jones is doing things that normally land on other fighters aren't landing on James Tony right away. That jump in left hook, that little right hand, and uh, Tony's just kind of enjoying himself making all that miss. Here, Roy Jones just adjusted that left hook and threw it a little bit lower because he knew Tony was ducking underneath it so uh, that shows good good skill on Jones's part by adjusting that left hook you know for Tony he just conceded the first half of round number one that's not a problem I guess when you know you have a 12 rounder and you believe you can knock a guy out and I think that's what Tony has in mind yeah. well I'm not necessarily sure he conceded this first round we're only halfway through the other thing is is that uh, you know it's ring generalship as well who's controlling the pace who's making who do what and uh, right now, Jones has landed the only meaningful punches, but uh, the round isn't over yet. Good counter left hook there from Tony. And Tony just missed the counter right hand off of Jones's lunging right hand, and then came back with a left hook, which, which did land. So uh, this is not a, a lock this round for uh, Roy Jones Jr. Part of the property that can hurt Jones is that left hand. You see, he keeps it down almost like it's in a holster. Yeah, he does, but it comes out so quick, and he's got such great lateral movement that even though he keeps his hands down, he somehow finds a way to get out of your way. Nice that, right lead there from Jones. And he wasn't there for the counter right hand back from Tony, because what did he do? He slid right off to the side, which is the difficult part about Roy Jones Jr., on when, top of everything else. When he knocked Tate out with that left hand, that's exactly what he was doing. He was landing the punch and, and leaving the scene of the crime. Jones the aggressor here in round one. Tony yet to really put that body attack together. Jones just, Jones just left with his right hand down and caught a little bit. Richard Steele confused about that 10 second clap, which was really just a 10 second warning for the fighters to let them know there's only 10 seconds left in the well, round. Well, let me tell you something. Roy Jones Jr. got hit with a good little left hook by James Tony at the very end of that round, the last five or eight seconds. Uh, they both landed a couple good shots there. I'm not too sure who won that round. It was very close. Here's a corner of James Tony. That's good. It's going to sit you hook. And that's the first time I've ever seen that kind of distraction. We start out right, baby. The timekeeper was just giving a 10 second count. Well, uh, Richard Steele. You, you misinterpreted you something right else hand. other uh, than right the bell hand. for the time. Keep and, that uh, hand up and catch it, that. It's going to sit that hook up. Again. The, You're catching uh, clean soon, man. The few rounds coming up is, uh, it, it was just Deep a 10-second warning with the okay, timekeeper claps. Still Their stop hands pulling, were hit to the mat to Way indicate to 10 seconds, but uh, a little miscommunication. Way to work, Jones champ. effective with Keep his sticking and moving back in round one. Tony, confident, just took his time and landed a pretty good left hook. He landed a couple left hooks and a couple body shots, which could have evened up this round on a lot of judges' scorecard. And he looks the more confident right now. Uh, Roy Jones was breathing a little heavy, heavily at the end of that round. I'm sure it's nerves, but Tony is, boy, he's cold as ice right now. Jones taking his time now, so is Tony. I think that Tony can do 
well is along with going to the body is he can take a punch and he even said in the press conference that he likes to get hit. Jones will oblige him there. Jones threw that uh, first left hook and missed again. Got Tony got right underneath it. And then Jones wised up and he threw a little left to the midsection, to the belly with that left hand. Uh, it's not to look, you know, oh, and there's a beautiful combination all off the gloves zone. The best moment that we've seen from Tony had to be against McCallum and also what he did against Iran Barkley. Have you ever seen a job like the one he put on Barkley? That was something to watch. Barkley's style was made to order for a James Tony since he's such a ooh, nice little counter left hook right up and yes. Roy Jones off the missed right hand by Tony. But that style of Barkley was made to order for uh, for uh, Jim Stone. With that foot from Tony, I notice when Jones throws his punches, Joey leaves him, he leaves his hands down. Well, yeah, but in this, at the same time, he just caught with a little right hand, Jones did. Jones leans back so well on his right leg that even though his hands are down, his head is pulled way back, and he leaves his hands out way in front of him to counter you, so you walk into his hands, not his head. 26 bouts for Roy Jones Jr. He's been 12 rounds only once, 10 rounds twice, and he's eight rounds three times. Everything else has been under six rounds. So he has 19 bouts that didn't quite make it past the midway point. And he'll perhaps get a test in that route tonight against Tony. Good lead, left hooks. Beautiful movement by Roy Jones in the corner. He bounced off of one rope, bounced off the other, and came out of the uh, corner before Tony knew what happened. But Tony's biting his time right now. He's, he's, so he's got to look for something like that, that counter right hand off that lead by uh, Roy Jones Jr. Tony yet to go to the body, and that's been one of his mainstays throughout his career. Jones, though, not staying there, getting his and leaving. It's awful dangerous to go to a body, to the body against a guy with such quick hands like Roy Jones. So uh, James Tony might be uh, looking to drop him in occasionally, but he's got to be very careful. Jones has got those beautiful left uppercuts, and when you go to the body, you, you do offer up your head quite a bit. Final seconds here in the second round of work. So far, Jones has asserted himself pretty well. Good combination from Jones. Tony into trouble. Jones now starting to come forward, landing some uppercuts inside, and Tony says, give me more. Is that all you got? Jones says, yeah. Well, you know, right now, as I see it, uh, Roy Jones is able to do what he does best. He has to use his speed and circle you with his feet. That's going to be James Tony's job now to corner Roy Jones, to pin him against the ropes. He's going to have to start mauling him. You cannot look to counterpunch such a quick guy like Roy Jones. You've got to really go. And here's a, uh, a little example of his quickness. There's four left, uh, uh, two left uppercuts, two left hooks, another left uppercut. Right hand, Tighten up. Tighten up. and you know he's well, just so jab, accurate. Double up on the jab. Last couple, those did not. Right. No, they didn't hurt James. Right. Keep the control, just like shit. Good. Doing good, but uh, I'll tell you, Keep they had up pulling, and they score points. So uh, Tony so cannot many. linger around and let right. Roy Jones outbox him like that this next round, or he's going to dig a deeper hole for himself. Initially, with the naked eye, it appeared as though when Tony jumped back that he was somewhat staggered, but he was actually just gaining his balance. Exactly. And now the body work from Tony. Some big headshots here from Jones to keep him out of the inside, though. Jones the quicker of the two. Would you agree, Joe? Well, he is at this point. Right now, Tony seemingly uh, thinks he knows what he has to do, and that's to put the pressure on. But Roy Jones came off the ropes when he got pinned there with some beautiful shots back at Tony. Oh! Big left hook! And down goes Tony! And he was caught showing off! He did by that patented jumping left hook. He got suckered into it. I don't know if he was off balance as much as hurt. I think a little of both, but I don't think he's as hurt as the people might think he is here because he was fooling around. You know, Jones actually stuck his hands apart as if to joke, and Tony did the same thing, and Jones was too quick before Tony could get back defensively, and Jones starting to put it together here in the third. A minute gone by. Here comes Tony now, loading up the right hand right in the corner of Jones. And that has to surprise many people here, including myself. And I have to 
figure you're probably surprised at the power of Jones as well. I'm not surprised at the power of Jones at all, but uh, I am surprised that James Tony has taken this long to really put some pressure on. This is what he's got to do, just like that, to make this fight happen and get his counters in. He's really getting hit by some counter shots from Jones here. Jones' hands and his feet, everything a lot quicker, and his confidence growing. That could be dangerous, though, against Tony. Good counter Ooh, by Tony. His best punch of the fight. But look at Jones. He's a scary dude. They're both scary. But I think Jones is even scarier because he's so darn fast. But I'll tell you, oh, street, ring, anywhere, you wouldn't want to fight either one of these guys, especially Roy Jones at this point. So far, it's been all we figured it would be. Jones scoring the knockdown. It was more than a flash knockdown. Tony was off balance, but the power of the left hook kind of knocked him into his own turnbuckle. What I want you to look at, see, is uh, even though you just saw a miss right hand, is look at Jones when he gets pinned on the ropes and he ties up Tony. He looks around at the crowd. It's like he's, he's just wrestling with his baby brother. No problem. He's got so much. Look, look at him. See, looks around. No problem. You know, I can deal with that. He's really an amazing guy, full of self-confidence. Look how low his hands are. Tony nearly caught him that time with the left hook. But you saw what happened. Jones had his hands down, but they're so quick, he leaned back and caught Tony with a little left hook. He's just, he's just so quick. You don't fight like this unless it works for you. And this has worked for Jones so long, it'll work for him tonight as well. He is so quick. Tony is right now finding out that he may not have the quickest hands in the sport, but we know he has the street toughness. And you look, you look up under the right eye of Tony, who appears not to have his game plan working for him right now. And he seems a bit confused. Or uh, uh, What's your game plan against Roy Jones? I mean, it's a hard game plan to have. The game plan is to put a lot of pressure on, but that's really never been James Tony's forte. He's a counterpuncher. Uh, he may have to switch up during the fight and really put in the pressure. Here's Miller, the trainer for Jones. But when you're, jab, when you're going in jab, double up on the jab. Uh, I wouldn't drop you. I know. Here we go. Here's that little whoop de doo fake out. They're both faking. Look, and there goes Jones. And see, he kind of caught him and pushed him, too. They bumped the bodies together. I don't think he was hurt as much. He was off balance. And then watch, watch, see, and then the push there. And look at Tony, how strong he is, though. He doesn't go down. Because he knows that if he does go down, any part touches, it's a knockdown. Jones actually Which played him into anyway. this, though. He suckered him into that yeah, by doing did. it himself. And Tony felt prey for it. But it was definitely a push. It was a, it was a punch, but then the ultimate result was a push. Round four, and like a cat in an alley, Tony comes out with some fury here to start the round. On the ropes, Jones, but he's been able to slide off without being damaged that much so far. Tony looking more serious now, Joe, as he leans inside and eludes a left hook. Tony's got to work as uh, when he finally does get close to Roy Jones, he can't let Richard Steele come in and break it by obliging Jones and getting tied up with him. He's got to get his hands free and work to make the referee think that he doesn't have to step in and break him and then separate and give more room. It, was that left hook. it wasn't a strong left hook, but it was one that's aggravated and, and kind of demoralizing. Jones is working that left hand. That's been his pet punch so far here through three plus. Just when you think uh, you should watch out for the hook, Jones will come with that straight right hand, and it's fast and hard. Three and a half years, Tony's been a champion. And well, they're talking to one another now. Good body work from Jones. He's not really known for his work downstairs, but mixing it up quite nicely so far, the challenger. Well, right now, it's a runaway for Roy Jones Jr., unfortunately, uh, for James Tony. He, this is where he's got to do his work. You see how he just put his arm around Roy Jones there? He can't. He's got to keep his hands in front of him and, and work. The closer Roy Jones get, gets to Tony is when he's got to start punching. Big shot from Tony, his best punch of the fight. And Jones nods his head as if to say, nah, didn't feel much of it. Tony has perhaps the bigger one punch, but he's not really a one punch knockout artist. He goes through the body a lot, but he hasn't had a chance to really do that so far here in this one, Joe. Hey, this Roy Jones Jr. is really amazing. He gets a, a good right hand by Tony off those two misses by Jones. But see how he slides off to the side of Tony, too? Tony will dip that left shoulder, and he takes advantage of that by going around Tony and landing beautiful little angle shots on him. Really frustrating for James Tony right now. Two minutes gone by here in the fourth. Tony's starting to assert himself again here. 
as Roy Jones has landed four wicked shots, two to the body and two to the head. This has been all good so far. Both fighters showing us some stuff, and Jones so far the better. Using the jab and the hooks and the right leads occasionally. And Tony starting to put some body work exactly. together. Exactly, and this is what uh, James Tony has to do. He has to get down. Uh, he has to get in through that uh, offense of Roy Jones somehow by moving his head, blocking punches, and then taking that opportunity to touch Jones's body immediately. It's not the way. Here's Jones. And champion off balance being caught by the left and right hand. Closing moments here in round number four. Jones rallying late here. Punch to get out, punch to get out. Right, step back, step back, step back. You know, Tony, a bit more effective in that round, Joe. He went okay, to the body tied. successfully. Back into the he landed so a couple of rights to the head, but still, all in all, Jones right did what he wanted to do by sticking and moving. Woo! Having fun, baby. Getting a little closer to him now. The reason he was wrong. Hit him with them right hand, come back to the left foot. But jab your way in. Doing what you're doing. Way to work. Way to work. He's slowing down some now. You'll be able to hit him more now. He's slowing down a little bit. Okay? Deep breath. You stop pulling, man. Stop pulling. Right here, four or five. It's five. It's five. Round five. five. Three rounds. Jones landing 41% of his punches. He threw 153. He has thrown rather 85 for Tony for 31%. And of course, a knockdown scored by Jones back in round number three. A left hook. This is not what Jones wants to do in the center of the ring with James Tony. Well, Jones has missed a, a, a real quick flurry of punches, and Tony is so adept at slipping and rolling with punches. And here's where he's got to come out of that with his own punches. After he takes those two and three touches from Roy Jones, he's got to come back and shoot his own punches right back at Jones to even the score up, or you just keep falling behind. Nice defensive ploy there by Jones. And what I notice is he'll Jones will use his left hand and almost like Larry Holmes used to wave it across himself, and then he'll throw a hook off of it. Been effective. Very difficult to hit. You saw what Roy Jones did. He stood in there uh, a few seconds ago, threw a left hand to the body, and then slid over completely around James Tony. It's amazing stuff. And this is what's giving Tony so much problems right now: is the angles and the fleet of uh, and the uh, foot speed of uh, Roy Jones Jr. Not to mention the hand speed. over a minute gone by here in round number five. This one's scheduled for 12 rounds. James Tony's championship on the line here. The IBF version of the 168 pound title. And Roy Jones vacated his middleweight championship for this opportunity. And both fighters gave away a guaranteed two million plus to take some gate receipts. And there's Tony getting hit with some left and some right. Playing a decoy game, but Jones landing the ball. Oh. And they trade inside, and the power of Tony being noticed there. Again, Tony landing. And Jones coming back with some offering. And they trade in the middle of the squared circle here at the MGM. A minute left here in the fifth. Tony coming up with some big shots here in this round. But he has to come through some shots of Jones also. This is what Tony's got to do. He's got to make Jones work in hopes of tiring him out a little bit. It's only the fifth round. We've got seven more rounds to go. Tire him out and taking it to him in the later rounds because right now, ooh, good left hook by Roy Jones Jr. Right now, Jones is just fresh as a daisy and he's got all sorts of energy. Very sneaky left hand for Jones. Tony has him right where he should do some work to exactly. him right here. Tony can't always wait for that right hand. Ooh, oh, whistling turnaround. That foot missed the ball. He nearly got it. But though. you saw how Jones got out of the corner, was standing behind him like he walked through him. So this kid is just unbelievable. You cannot let him rest. You've got to tire out. Roy Jones Jr., and that means constant pressure. You can't give him these breathers here. We'll see what, the, what attrition has to do with this one. Because we're about to close out round five. This is a very close round, Joe. How do you, who do you like so far in this one? Well, I, you know, Joe, or Tony landed his occasional counter punches here, but I still like Jones for landing and, and ring generalship. Uh, the punches he's landed, early on he did more work. And uh, I, I just think it's been pretty much a sweep for Roy Jones so far. But Tony is getting closer and doing better. 
Come on, good. Way to work. Still, keep Mercus in control. In the Still try to sit that hook up. Try to hit that hook up off your jab now. You You'll get it in better. Put him in. You'll get it in better. Okay. There you go. You're doing good. This sixth round, baby. Coming in the six. Coming. Okay. Here, here. Coming in the six. Give him some water. Give him some water. Here. Here's some of the action in that intense well, fifth round. Here's where you got uh, Tony pressing the action. Here's that counter right hand that got deflected by Roy Jones, and then he landed that left hook off it. So Jones right, Tony right, but missed, and then a counter left hook. And here goes Jones to work now. He's on one side of you, then he's on the next, and he's peppering you the whole time. So far, Roy Jones Jr. has been the man as the challenger. And Tony is a guy that can go to the well late. 20 of its bouts, we're referring to the champion Tony, has have gone past six rounds. He has six KOs in the six, three KOs for Jones after the six. So the deeper it gets into the fight, you would believe that Tony would pick up the momentum. So far, it's been Roy Jones Jr. Looking to make his mark here, not only in the middleweight division as a super middle, but in the world of boxing. Has it been what you expected so far? Is yes, exactly. Action? Exactly what I expected. And that was that Roy Jones would use his superior athletic ability uh, on top of his God-given boxing talent. Look at that. I mean, that's just an athlete, pure and simple. And Tony's having a hard time dealing with it, even though he's probably the more accomplished fighter. But you just got a great set of wheels on Roy Jones Jr. here with all the other, you know, gadgets he's got going for him. And, it's just too difficult of a night for James Tony so far. He's got to do something to turn the tide here. And okay. that's, do that. Get rough, go to the body, use your arms, your forearms. Do anything you can to slow down Roy Jones and, and expose something that he will be vulnerable to. Tony looking to make something happen. He hasn't been able to so far. Jones is really slick, though. He has proven to be all of what many people that know him uh, believe he is. And, you know, it's amazing when you have a talent that's somewhat undiscovered in, in Jones, even though we know who he is. A lot of the boxing people out there uh, that are watching the fight right now, they're not that familiar with Roy Jones Jr. I, I think the general public, you're right, has uh, uh, not very much knowledge of Roy Jones. But the, the boxing community, of course, does. And that's why everyone anticipated this fight so much with a beautiful left hook by Roy Jones anticipated this fight so much because they knew the talent and of course they, everyone knows James Tony. Roy Jones holding that left hand in his holster. A quick draw with a two. Tony missing the overhand. See even though Roy Jones' hands are down on the ropes you still can't hit him. He turns his shoulder he leans back a little bit he's got great radar he's got great eyes and then his feet get him out of the way. He turns this way or that way, steps left or right. And he's just not there for James Tony. A little rabbit punch going on by both boys here. This round right here with not the same action as, oh, the prior five or so. But good left hand there from Roy Jones. Jones still landing his pet punch, though, which is the left hook. Yeah, see, he knew he was, wasn't going to land that punch. Boom, he got out, Jack, grab it quick. And that's... That's the amazing thing about Roy Jones. Look, threw a left hook, leaned back, didn't get hit with the sweeping right hand by Tony. Closing seconds here of round six. This will take us to the midway point in this bout. Yeah, right behind him again. Tony has to be frustrated. Of course, that's what got Terry Norris DQ the other night in Mexico City against uh, Santos Cardona. He's going to be behind him and hit him with the punch behind the head. So we better be careful of that. Way to turn him. Way to stand I want you to back into Tony's gap. Corner. Some of the hooks you're doing now from inside with it. Instead of outside with we'll stick the time. Right. But come through the middle. All right. Each time we put a little more pressure. We put a little pressure. So we, we got him on our territory now. We're coming into the championship round. That's right. Bing. Through the middle. Mm -hmm. Through the middle. Try to make he flicking for everything you do. Right. Every time you flick at him, man, he's going for it. Right All right. Okay. Stay right there. What do you 
What do you tell your guy, Joe, in this situation if you're in, in Tony's corner where you seem to be getting beat to the punch almost every time, like right there? I'd say, hey, you know, uh, you got a damn technique, and what you got to do is just assert your manhood on him at this point, rough him up, corner him, whatever it takes. If you got to grab him, hit him, you know, uh, on the shoulders, arm, anything, but you've got to score your punches. You can't do it by trying to counter punch or be slick. You've got to really start taking chances and opening up and making the other guy open up because obviously the superior talent is Jones. You're not going to beat him in a tactical game. So let's see if you can beat him at a rough game. Get in there and press him hard. With the exception of the fourth round, perhaps every other round has been Jones's round. And here, in round seven, he comes on the first minute. He goes right back to work with the lefts and rights. Tony getting hit by some big shots from Jones in the center of the ring. Combination punching there by Jones. The unknown is starting to be known now in Roy Jones Jr. Well, James Tony right now has, has been in a lot of fight. Got clipped with a beautiful right hand by Roy Jones and shook it off real well. But uh, Tony's never been in with somebody this talented, with the exception of maybe Michael Nunn, who was doing the same thing to him, was getting around him, surrounding him. But uh, Nunn ran out of gas, like I said later on, by, at the hand of James Tony working his body, which he's not doing in this fight against Roy Jones. Roy Jones on the ropes here. And he's been able to get away from all the pressure of the champion so far to this point. A little roughness there from Tony, but he, like you said, he has to try something. Right, he's got to do this, and, uh, you know, I'm sure Bill Miller in, in uh, Tony's corner would like to have Ri Ri uh, referee Richard Steele just stay out of the way and let Tony maul him a little bit. I know as a corner man right now, I'd, I'd make sure in between rounds, I'd tell Richard Steele, hey, leave my man alone in the corner. He's trying to work just because the other guy's holding on. Give him a chance to work out of it, just like that. Time ticking away here for the champion as we go into the final 45 seconds of round seven. And Jones still connecting on combinations with the quicker hands and the more accuracy. Tony just pounding Jones, or Jones rather pounding Tony. Combination punch. Champion on the ropes now. And you don't see Jones, or Tony rather, retreat very often. He seems to be a bit winded too, Joe. Well, uh, I, I couldn't disagree with you there. Tony had him pinned in the corner, and Jones is the one who forced his way out. So. Uh, you know, it goes to show you that Jones is not only smart, but he's also very strong to back up a guy that much heavier than himself. And uh, listen, those punches are taking their toll on James Tony because he just got caught with another good left hook, even though he's sliding and rolling with a lot of them. A lot of them. Oh! oh good left hand from Tony and a right at the bell. Tony's best moment, but after he had been mauled for the majority of round number seven. <laughs> Back into Tony's corner. You hear me? Especially when we're inside. We got to take this fight. We're on our territory now. We got to make our move. We got to make our move now, son. Well, Bill Miller is right. James Tony does have to make a move, and uh, he can't wait one more round. Uh, I know he he can't move though. You can hit him all day, keeping at your range. We're, we're, we only got what five rounds left in this fight. He better make a move now because he's way behind. Look at that little replay there. We're gonna see this left hook land, but it was high on the head of uh, Roy Jones Jr. It wasn't that big of a punch. I think Richard Steele got hit a little bit harder uh, at the end there, but. Uh, it's an accomplishment to even hit Roy Jones on top of the head with a glancing punch. He's just not easy to hit square. Round number eight. So far, Roy Jones Jr., good left hook. And Tony had to grab on there. He lost his balance for a moment. Well, so it appeared. The left hook has been the best oh, shot there. And Tony hurt by that shot. Green wildly. Some head shots. And they're piling up for Jones, the challenger. He backs Tony up. And this is not a scene that you'll see very often. Here comes Jones, has Tony in his corner, pounding him to the head with left and right. Tony fires back a right hand. Tony was riding out 99% of those punches, especially in the corner there. Well, that was a little shot behind the head for Roy Jones, which doesn't do anybody any good. But right now, Tony isn't doing the smart thing. 
but he's doing what he thinks might work for him to get Jones to open up right in front of him instead of dancing around him. And maybe he can land a counter shot somehow out of these flurries. Joe, either Tony's tired or he's a good actor. He appears to be a bit worn. He's a bit worn, but I guarantee you he's trying to land something like that. If he's waiting for Jones to punch himself out, he's taking a beating in the process. Well, good work from Jones. You can see Jones is going to punch himself out. It's the eighth round already. He's trained his whole life for this. He's been in training camp for two months for this fight. He's not going to get tired. He's done everything right. Some blood now in the mouth of the champion, Tony, as he opens his mouth to breathe a bit harder and gets caught with a left hook right in the mouth. And on the ropes. You, you see what I mean? Richard Steele, he didn't like the forearm that he put across Roy Jones. But he can't break up James Tony on the inside when he finally gets to do a little of what he gets to do. He should let him work there. You know, sometimes I know the camps they talk to the referee or, or the, not the referee himself, but the representation in the state, right. and they point out some things about the other guy that they right. want stopped. Could this be the case with Jones? Well, uh, you know, right now I would say that uh, whatever was or should have been covered earlier wasn't. And the fact of the matter is it should be the corner's job right now to try to help out his fighters get any edge he can by talking to the referee. Right hand and more blood in the mouth of Tony. He said once before he likes to get hit. He's been hit. See, the referee's going to jump in and break him if, if Tony doesn't do something. That's why when he finally gets in there. Ooh. Oh, big left hand from Tony, but not as big as it appears. Look at, look at Steele, though. He's getting in the way too much here. He's got to let these guys fight a little bit more. And that just fired up Roy Jones in the final 10 seconds. A street fight now in the middle of the ring. What is Richard Steele doing there? He heard, he heard the... It's a 10-second warning. What a bad move by Richard Steele. I hate to say it because I know Richard personally. And right when the fight was beginning to turn into an alley fight, he made a mistake. Well, what happened was he heard the... The 10 second warning, which is a clapping sound. It's very loud, it's right next to ringside. Uh, and unfortunately for Richard Steele, it's, it's quite embarrassing, I'm sure, for him right now. Uh, he's just misinterpreting the 10 second warning for the bell. And it's uh, unfortunate for the fans, the referee, and the fighters right now. It's getting late for the champion, round number nine coming up. Through the first half of the fight, Jones dominated as we look back at the action. It looks like this might be the, uh, the part of the round where it looked like uh, Tony was hurt, but he wasn't. He just fell off balance. Here's Jones uh, missing with another uh, left hook, but he landed quite a few punches in that last round. That was one of the few he did land. It's getting pretty late for the champion now as well, we enter round number nine. It's obvious James Tony needs a knockout. There's, uh, no two ways about it. If you're Jones, what are you telling him in his corner before this round? Do you still have him use the left hand and the combinations, or do you have him up on his bike? Look, I have him doing the same thing he is doing mm -hmm. uh, every round, round in, round out, and that's winning each round handily by using your superior athletic ability. Don't try to get into a slugfest. Hit your shots. Get out to the side. Work them. And, and that's look, look, it looks like that's the talking he got to in the corner. Look, you're, you've got an eight. Oh, just slipped in some ice. Uh, eight round advantage. Go ahead and box. You can do this the rest of the fight and still win. One thing it does for Tony, though, it gives him a chance to move in because there's no punches coming at him. Well, I guarantee you Roy Jones isn't going to take this whole round off for the rest of the fight. Uh, he might just be having a little fun moving around, doing his thing, catching his breath, and uh, I'm sure he's going to open up momentarily. Would this have been the moment coming into this round that you tell Tony to go in there and finish this guy? It's getting late. Well, I would have told James Tony that four rounds ago that it was obvious uh, and apparent that there's no way you're going to up the uh, uh, tactic this man, that you're going to have to go in there and just rough him up, open him up, and get him into a slugfest somehow, which he did do last round. But that strategy came a little too late. James Tony. Thing, the thing you have to keep in mind about Jones and what appears to be a lead is you have three judges scoring the fight and they're all at three different angles looking at 
the fight from three different sides of the ring. Well, and if you, you lay off, things could change not only in the judge's mind, but in the in the ring itself. I'll tell you what, the judge on my side's got it a shutout. <laughs> but let me put it this way: I, I, I would, I would, I would be. Uh, Really shocked if uh, these judges just have a big lead for James Tony right now. You mean for uh, Jones? Or for uh, Roy Jones Jr., I'm sorry. Uh, James Tony, if I'm his corner man and I'm looking at it from a corner man standpoint, I'm saying you need a knockout. Whether the judge have it that way or have it, has it that way or not, as a corner man, my opinion is you need a knockout if I'm in James Tony's corner. And that's the perspective I'm looking at right now is that he's way behind on points here. The left eye of Tony is swelling. A lot of redness around it. For Jones, he's unmarked in the closing seconds here of round nine. Oh, good right hand coming out of the clinch inside from Jones, the challenger. Sneaky punch. He is very slick, Joe. Ten-second count as Munzing in the champion. He gets caught with the left and knocked into the neutral turnbuckle. Well, Jones landed two rights uh, and then slipped over to the left side and landed the left over the body. He's just outboxing uh, James Tony at every turn. You got to give credit. I haven't seen one round where it's been in the reverse. There you go. There you go. You feel that hand up there just like you did. Run it off. Right up there. Put it on his head. Other water bottle, Ronnie. I'm hit hard, man. Come on, give it to him. Give it to him. Joe says I'm hit hard. Give it to him. Something I noticed about the cornerman also, Joe, is the way they jumped in the ring. The Tony Hill. They took their time getting in. On the down other hand, to our round. Jones is being jumped make in the move. ring with a lot of enthusiasm. Exactly. Well, because they know they have this. You hear me? Exactly right. right. That's the right way to read and see. Uh, uh, Roy, Jones, uh, Roy Jones Jr.'s corner is very, very round. excited. They know that they're just minutes away from nine minutes another fighting. world championship fight. Not to have it. James Tony people, I think, are a little confused as well as James Tony are as to what's going to happen next. And I, I don't think it bodes well for James Tony at this point. And his corner is reflecting that. In their actions. Here's the bell for round number 10, and the hourglass dripping away the sand for the champion James Lightsell Tony. Nine minutes left for him to perhaps retain his championship with a dramatic knockout. He's done it before. He did it in his last fight in the 12th round against Prince Charles Williams in the same ring. Even though he was ahead slightly on the scorecards, he landed that big right hand to put his man to sleep, and he's looking for a a bit of deja vu in this one. Jones quickly using that counter left. Tony threw that right hand of the body. Jones counter it, playing right over the top. And it bounced off the ropes and just kind of raised his hands and slith slithered off the ropes away from James Tony. The body work that we're used to seeing Tony do, he hasn't really had a chance to put it together, so it's really not much use unless right. he's going to use it as a decoy to go to the head. It, it, the, the body attack has been uh, dismembered by three things. One, James Tony hasn't uh, really taken it, uh, uh, didn't do it early enough. Number two, Roy Jones Jr. won't let him because he's tying him up. And number three, Richard Steele breaks it up pretty darn quick once they do get on the inside. Like a shadow. Yeah, it's, it's really hard to get your body work off when you got a guy like Jones that is just so um, adept at turning and twisting. And look, throwing hands up and just, he's got great radar and it's hard to get a solid shot off body or head. Look at, look at Tony, he's back to him again. I don't know. Yeah, I'm about to ask you about the meals. You mentioned he may have had six meals, Tony, the champion, uh, since the weigh-in, and he blew up some 16, 18 pounds. Could we now be seeing the effects of that? Well, you know, like I said, it, it doesn't look like James is real sluggish. It just looks like Roy Jones Jr. is at super sonic speed right now. I think this is the same James Tony we normally see. It's just that he's got a guy in there that is just head and shoulders athletically uh, above him. And, and can fight to boot. This kid is just a, a brilliant in the ring, Roy Jones Jr. And James Tony, I don't think it's the weight so much as this style is just killing us. You have to love the way that Tony is, or rather Jones is negotiating the clock here in this round. Oh. He steps away, runs to his right, and slips back to his left. Lands a couple, leaves the scene of the crime, then back inside. Even on the ropes, he, as you mentioned, ties up well. He ties up well, he looks nonchalant, he's looking around. The audience, he jumps in with sneaky punches. When you think he's not going to punch on the inside, he whips three and four punches to your belly. He backs off, jumps in. Oh, man. This is, this is any trainer's worst nightmare, this type of fight. And there's not many of them out there. Maybe Cornell Whitaker is as tricky as this kid. Tony's right hand landing there, but 
He didn't really find the kisser with it. Closing seconds here of the 10th round. Whistling right hand, a portion of it landing on the nose of Tony. Six minutes left for the champion to come up with a dramatic KO, or perhaps he'll lose his championship. Keep, keep it just like that. Keep picking them shots and fight. So That's often, Joe, when the guy. Six minutes, James. As we uh -huh. All right. Show it to me. Okay, bro. Let's go. We got to have it. When a guy is having problems Keep making turn, weight, man. so Don't often, Joe, we see minutes, him Make struggle in a big fight. This is Tony's game. last fight at 168. Oh, yeah, I but I think more so than that is the other guy over in the blue corner. I think Roy Jones is just superior above the rest. You, you know, like, huh? like we always say, no, no mistakes. Excuses. Keep them tall. Now, keep them keep a little grease on my hand. The way it's behind you. Now yeah. it's the two guys in the ring. Let's forget about the weight, even though that is a Be that needle in the haystack, you throw in there. But the, re the reality of this fight tonight is that Roy there you go. Jones there you go. Make him fine. When you turn, catch him, Roy. That can go. Okay. With not as good a talent is as good as we thought he would be tonight. And probably a lot better than James Tony thought he was going to be. Six minutes left here as we go to round 11. And Tony, as he has done initially in every round to start, it comes out with a left hook. Tony being encouraged to go after his man. He's really tried. They're a pretty good left hook from Tony. You see how Roy Jones stuck out his hand straight and put his head back. Like trying to do a, a, a beautiful left hook by Roy Jones. Right he just turns and slides off the ropes and the punch from Tony lands on his uh, off his floor. One thing I guess that's somewhat surprising for Tony, uh, we haven't seen him try anything different. Or is there is it because he's limited? Well, I'll tell you what, you know he's not a limited guy because we've seen him really do some extraordinary things in the ring. One against Mike McCallum, who's a consummate counter-puncher boxer, against a slugger like Iran Barkley, and against another top-notch athlete like Michael Nunn. We've seen him overcome, adjust, and win. But this is just something real special here in Roy Jones. You've got a guy that uh, really, you're going to have to come up with a real, real uh, Star-like uh, performance to beat a guy like Roy Jones. I can see him going undefeated as long as he wants to be, as long as he stays in shape and keeps his head on straight. Even when he's trying to duck under a punch, Jones will catch him with the left hook as he did seconds ago. I'm surprised Tony's not coming after him with everything. A little bit smashed to the face from the champion, Tony. And count it right. He should be all over him right now. He's, he's hard to catch. Look at the feet. Just watch his feet. They never stop. And once they do stop, he'll tie you up and then hit you. Look. Oh, beautiful left hook. He gets on both sides here. This is incredible to see Tony get waxed like this on the rope. Tony got hit with a good right hand. I know he's a little stunned, but I know he's going to play possum here and come out of it with something. He just looked to do it, but Jones got his distance again because he knows that same very thing, that Tony was playing a little bit of possum off that good shot but not enough to put him down or out. Final minute here of round 11. Jones <laughs> trading in silver ring here. Well, Richard Steele getting dangerously close, but they're both trading punches on the break there. It's been all Roy Jones Jr. so far. Oh, boy, how many times has he done that to James Tony? Jumped in with that left hook. Tony's got nothing on his punches at this point either. I think he's hurt now, too, Joe. To the body and upstairs. Look at Tony. He is a bad dude, let me tell you. He'd like this fight to go on for about 38 rounds. He could probably win it. Yeah, then, he huh? might win it. But in 12 rounds, you ain't going to beat Roy Jones Jr. Final seconds here of round 11. And of course, everyone's curious about what Tony will do in the final three minutes of work. We know he has his work cut out for him, and he's been there before. Can he pull it out once again? Final, instru Four, final eight, instructions eight. in the corner of Tony. <sighs> we need him. Come on. We need this here. I got to have this here. We need it. There's no more They're tomorrow. Oh, right. that corner. This is it. The last and final round. I want you to touch him, put them three and four point combinations on him and go. Your head. I'm on your head. He won't, let me talk. And final round. Okay? Roy, One, listen two. to me. Don't give him a chance. Don't give him a chance to take nothing, okay? Don't stay there slug with him, but I want you hitting him and talk. In comparison to what you heard in Tony's corner. 
They know they're three Go minutes away from the with Prince Charles. Good from winning the championship. Well, Berkinson is uh, Jones' trainer. He says, I don't want you to get in there and slug with him, but I want you to keep beating on him, touching him, hitting him, and working him. So he just wants him to box him, but he wants him to be active. On the other hand, uh, my heart goes out to Bill Miller, the trainer of James Tony, who's brought him to this point. He's been a wonderful trainer for him. I, uh, my heart goes out to him because he was kind of uh, stuck for words there. Uh, his only instruction was, we need him. Well, what I think he really meant to say is, we need a knockout or we lose our time. But he really didn't want to say it, huh? No, he did. Jones not changing his plan here, even though it appears as though he has to fight the one if he can stay on his feet. All it takes is one moment of glory, an instant a punch from left field to right field. Right down Main Street from Tony, and he could turn the tide. But I don't know if it's going to happen here, Joe. This has been a magical ring for some of the uh, big time names in the world of boxing. George Foreman late in the fight when he seemed to be all but beaten. He came back with the big right hand in the 10th round to knock out Michael Moore, but we haven't seen anything to indicate that Tony could do the same. I'll grant you that. Uh, that was a, a marvelous upset, but here the difference was is that Foreman was landing his shots all throughout the fight. He was getting beat, yes, but he was landing his shots and he was breaking Michael Moore down. On the other hand, James Tony just hasn't been able to get those repeated shots on the chin of Roy Jones to break him down. And that's been the difference here. It's been total control, uh, no give and take at all, which is which is surprising. But then again, I think a lot of people kind of knew that Jones was the type of fighter that could pull this type of performance out of his hat. And I get the impression that Jones wants to close out the show in grand fashion instead of moving. You see him throwing rights like that and landing. Through a right hand, Tony came back with a counter. Oh! Ooh, a smash! Left hook to the face from Jones. And Tony unable to come back with anything. It's been a boxing lesson so far here tonight. And it looks as though it's going to go in the books as an upset, a slight one. Uh, Tony was about a 3-2 to two favorite in this fight. They opened the fight at even here at the MGM, and the public quickly jumped on Tony. And those are, we're talking about some unhappy campers now. People that wagered on the champion because he is a beaten man. It was, it, 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 looking back on it, it's hard to bet against a guy a winner like James Tony, especially with some of the brilliant things we've seen him do. But here we just saw the emergence of a true superstar in this game, as Roy Jones Jr. Jones wants to finish in grand fashion here as he's starting to get more aggressive in the final 10 seconds. It's over, and I think it's over for the champion, at least as the super middleweight champion. Roy Jones Jr. splendid indeed, splendid enough for the upset, or at least so it appears, Joe Wilson. Well, I, I got a, a, a shutout. How surprising is that? A shutout for Roy Jones Jr. The only round that appeared close enough to give to the champion is the one that unofficially I gave him. It was the fourth round because that was when Tony began to apply some body work. Right. But he couldn't sustain it from that point on. Exactly. And then the knockdown in round three, the left hook, uh, the indication that Jones is not only a, a slick fighter that has some good moves in the ring, but he also has the capability of knocking a guy down. That's right. The last person I remember knocking down, James Tony, was uh, the southpaw, Reggie Johnson, who went on to become middleweight champion of the world. But uh, other than that, uh, nobody puts to James Tony on the seat of his pants. And this is a guy coming up from 60, Roy Jones Jr., to put a bigger man on the canvas. You know, uh, Jones uh, has the framework. Look, there's not an ounce of fat on him to also go up and wait in the near future. I'm not saying that that's what I recommend, but he could possibly do that. Look at the body fat on him. Ladies and Here's gentlemen, Michael here Buffer. at the MGM Grand of Las Vegas, we go to the scorecards. John Stewart scores the bout, 119 to 108. Glenn Hamada scores it, 117 to 110. And Jerry Roth has it, 118 to 109 for the winner by unanimous decision. And new super middleweight champion of the world, Roy Jones Jr.
Seigneur.